Would you leave it all behind to set your sights on new horizons? 跟其他人不一样的生活的方法。将冇可能变成有可能嘅地方。Could you journey afar to embrace your field of dreams? 江门创业嘅呢三年半嘅时间。You know, I've been in Shanghai for 18 years. Hear it firsthand from those who took that leap in footprints. You can succeed anywhere if you're good enough. 坚持自己嘅初心，坚持自己嘅梦想嘅时候，终有一日你系会赢。Where everyday people beat the odds and leave their mark. Footprints. I think this is the first time a Chinese girl got in. I think before me there was a Japanese. Has gone into the Royal Ballet School, but I think I'm the first Chinese ever got into the Royal Ballet School. They only select ten girls and ten boys every year. I was only ten when I auditioned. Sixty-year-old Flora Chong Ling, a native of Hong Kong, was a dancing child prodigy, and has become a successful ballerina, choreographer, and businesswoman. In the most recent years, she has spent much of her time cultivating dancing talent in Beijing. As a dance teacher, she is trying to establish a new genre of dancing art by integrating Tai Chi, a traditional Chinese martial art, with Western dancing techniques. I'm in linkage and in research with Dr. Yohan to help to develop a syllabus so we can use Tai Chi modern and ballet. To integrate it, first of all, integrate it in all dance movements. Second is to start a graduation syllabus where you can do examination with this breathing dancing. But how did Miss Chang Ling become a multi-talented artist herself? And what exactly are the dancing courses she offers? This is a dancing school in Sunyi District, a northeast suburb of Beijing. Twelve-year-old Xiong Jia Rei comes here four times a week to learn dance. Each time, the girl practices for two hours under the guidance of either Flora Chong Ling or another teacher. This time, she has an extra privilege as both Chong Ling and a guest teacher from the United States are coaching her. Has so much potential. So you go for all the lines, all the emotions. Chong Ling says the girl, also known as Carrie, has been making steady progress in both ballet and modern dance. Carrie's been dancing for almost four or five years since a child. She's been doing baby classes, and then she did basic ballet training, and then she got into solo training, ballet, and now she's entering into modern. Modern people think it's easy, but it's not. You need foundation of ballet, musicality, and muscle tone stretching training. Then you can do it because you need to do the structure and learn to relax. It takes a lot of muscles to do modern. Yeah, so she's now beginning to do modern solos. I'm called Xiong Jia Rui. While taking a break from her hard training, the student says Flora Chong Ling has given her considerate training every step of the way. 我学到了很多细节，就是感觉每个动作更认真一些了，能做到更到位一些。I've learned many small details about dancing from Flora. For every movement in my dancing, I have to do it exactly under her guidance. I think Flora is different from my other dance teachers. She is more meticulous and stricter. For example, she will always point out movements that I haven't done very well, while other teachers may not. The girl says she wants to be a professional dancer in the future. Her potential has also been seen by Timothy Fournier. Who has just been tutoring her in modern dance? She's doing great. Yeah, I think she's fabulous. She she has a great technique. She has a, kind of an open personality. I think. I think she's ready to develop as a dancer. Fournier is from the U.S. city of Boston. He's been invited by Chong Ling to teach at her dance school. A meeting at an international dance competition in New York years ago. Led to cooperation between the two dance artists. We met in America. I was a judge at an international dance competition, 
And um, they were the only school from China there that year. That was the first time a school from China came. That competition started 40 years ago. So we met at, I think it was in New York at the end of the competition. And I've been living in Asia for over 10 years. So we thought it was like good fortune to me and that we could come and do work together. So I started a few years ago coming to teach some of her like protege students, doing some like special choreography for them. And most of them went to America the following years and uh, competed with their dances. So it's been fun. Oh my God, open your legs like this. Oh God, oh. oh. God. And the circulation. Chung Ling says about 900 students are learning at her dance school in Beijing, which was founded a decade ago. This school is a vocational school. We have ballet dancers. We have dancers that want to go under professional training to go and compete or go to Royal Ballet School or American Dance Theater. They want to come here and do full-time training every day. Besides teaching students herself, Chong Ling, the school's founder and artistic director, has invited foreign dance experts like Timothy Fournier to teach or design courses for it. Over these years, when I've been working with Flora since... Dr. Johannes Jungholm is the head of the education and resident choreographer at the dance school. Originally from Sweden, Stjongholm has rich experience in choreography and dance education. He worked in the UK and South Korea before coming to China in 2012 at the invitation of Chang Ling. As head of education of Chang Ling's school, the Swedish dance expert says he aims to cultivate young Chinese dance prodigies in a scientific and comprehensive way. We are gradually expanding our curriculum to uh, cover more and more varieties of dance. In the beginning, it, we were very much specialized on ballet, and uh, I think that is a very good foundation because the ballet technique is one of the most important techniques. We are creating new artistic ground. The aim in terms of our students with that is to develop their minds as well as their bodies. Being a dancer today is not just about the body and moving. It has a lot of creative mental abilities that, that has to be developed as well. So we want to develop that entire person. As part of the school's innovation in dance education, Johan Stjongholm and Chung Ling are exploring ways to integrate the traditional Chinese martial art of Tai Chi into its curriculum. I'm in linkage and in research with Dr. Johan to help to develop a syllabus so we can use Tai Chi modern and ballet to integrate it. First of all, integrate it in all dance movements. Second is to start a graduation syllabus where you can do examination with this breathing dancing. So male and female can do to enhance their health. Tai Chi features slow, graceful movements accompanied by deep circular breathing. It can be practiced both as a mode of attack and defense as well as physical exercise to improve health. Many Tai Chi masters and practitioners say the movements work with Qi or life force a type of flow that everyone has. A study by the Harvard Medical School published in 2009 showed that this gentle form of exercise can help maintain strength, flexibility and balance. Chong Ling first picked up Tai Chi a decade ago. For her, the traditional Chinese art does have the effect of relieving pain caused by intensive dancing over long periods. Tai Chi is something that link up the internal force. It's like a TV. You have the box, and inside the box, there's a lot of things going on with lots of different stations and a lot of different visual content that changes inside your body. In the dance world, they don't talk about too much about the intestines, the breathing and their different parts, and how you actually use breathing to heal and to clear chakras. Chong Ling uses her own experience to show that combining Tai Chi and dancing has given her better health and boosted her energy. I do in the morning Tai Chi. In the morning you breathe, and before you sleep, you wake up, you're breathing. This breathing process is continuous. 
I felt my health became really energized. I feel 35. I don't feel tired. I feel energized. In fact, this energetic 60-year-old ballerina and dance teacher was a ballet prodigy in Hong Kong some 50 years ago. She was enrolled by the prestigious Royal Ballet School in London at the age of 11. How did she get chosen by the elite school? And what's the life at the school like? Stay tuned for the details after a short break. Chong Ling was born in Hong Kong in 1959, nearly four decades before the city was handed back to China from Britain. In 1970, aged 11, she was chosen from a pool of 4,000 children seeking to be recruited by the Royal Ballet School in London. She recalls that the competition was fierce. Only 20 of them made it, and she broke a record. I think this is the first time a Chinese girl got in. I think before me there was a Japanese has gone into the Royal Ballet School, but I think I'm the first Chinese ever got into the Royal Ballet School. They only select 10 girls and 10 boys every year. I was only 10 when I auditioned. And then it was ready to go in September, so I left at 11 to go to the Royal Ballet School. The enrollment ushered in a decade of intensive professional dance and related artistic training for the then young girl. My education has been very, very orderly, disciplined. A full day, morning, 8 o'clock morning, get up. You study in the morning, normal academics. Then lunch, you change to dance clothes and you dance all afternoon. And then evening, after dinner, you go to prep, do homework. And then you go and shower and bath and then t 10 o'clock you're in bed every day. And you live in the school. You're allowed to come out Saturday noontime and then go back Sunday. And I had no relatives there at that time, so I just stayed in the school. Living far away from her family, the students found the training harsh. She remembers that she really missed the warmth and sweetness of her family life back in Hong Kong. In the beginning, I cried so bad. I missed home, and I'm the youngest one of four sisters and brothers. So I was like the little toy for everyone, because I was like so little. And everyone loved me, and I got spoiled, and I was just being bao bao. They always hugged me all the time, so I was never walking on floor. And the tasty Chinese food back home made the lonely girl even more homesick. Every weekend, we made jiaozi, dumplings, Chinese dumplings. Um, zha you tiao. You tiao is fried bread, and then we have zha zhang mian. It's the very famous Beijing noodles that you put some beans, some very salty bean sauce, and cucumber and radish, and, and you mix it up, and it's absolutely yummy. Chong Ling's mother hailed from the Chinese capital of Beijing. The food the young girl missed so much has been popular in her mother's hometown. Though she was homesick, the young girl made every effort to fit in with the life and studying in London and she gradually fell in love with British culture. The English culture is very much set in their own period, and I quite like that traditional period, like 18th century, 19th century, the costumes, their clothing, the way they speak, their mannerisms, their formalities. All this gave me some kind of very strong impressions. So I loved my life in England. <laughs> Her love of British culture and hard work bore fruit. Two years into her time at the Royal Ballet School, she won a dance medal at a major international ballet competition in London. The competition was held by the Royal Academy of Dance, one of the world's most influential dance education organizations. As the young girl got used to life in London, she also broadened her artistic talent by learning costume design, choreography, stage direction, and theatrical production. Altogether, she spent almost 10 years studying at the Royal Ballet School in London. After that, Chong Ling traveled in France, Italy, Russia, and Germany, as well as countries in North America and Southeast Asia to gain experience in the different art circles. But she had to move back to Hong Kong at the age of 20 
as her mother fell ill. I joined the Royal Ballet for one year. Then my mother got sick. That's when I came back to Hong Kong to decide to take leave for one year to be with her because she contracted three types of cancer and it was very difficult. So she died with cancer. Since I got back, I never left because I was traumatized that I haven't even been with her and I had to face her dying within a year. So I had to stay. Her mother's death resulted in a lot of soul-searching. Chong Ling says before she turned 20, her world was centered around ballet and traveling around the world. Thus, little attention was left for her family. After her mother's death, she decided not to return to the UK to pursue her career at the Royal Ballet Company, which draws dancers from the Royal Ballet School. Instead, she stayed in Hong Kong, spending more time with her family. And I wanted to be my, with my mother so bad, but it was too late. So that's the year we, we bonded. We all came back. My sister came back from America, my brother from New York, and Franklin never left, so we all bonded. I continued to further my career in Hong Kong. That's when I joined Hong Kong Ballet. Hong Kong Ballet was then a newly founded dance group when Chong Ling joined it some 40 years ago. Chong Ling recalls doing some modeling and learning the local dialect of Cantonese in her spare time while working for the Hong Kong Ballet. And life in her hometown was quite satisfying. Living in Hong Kong gave me strength to feel that, oh, I'm in a home environment. This is my home. I felt I could do many things because I know people that my father knows that helps, family, friends, everything's familiar. Small place, Kowloon, Hong Kong, and everyone's very friendly. But while she enjoyed her life in the then British ruled Hong Kong, Chong Ling's family roots in the Chinese mainland ultimately led her to travel and live in Beijing. But why has Beijing been so appealing to her? We'll find out after this short break. Would you leave it all behind to set your sights on new horizons? Could you journey afar to embrace your field of dreams? You know, I've been in Shanghai for 18 years. Hear it firsthand from those who took that leap in footprints. You can succeed anywhere if you're good enough. Where everyday people beat the odds and leave their mark. Footprints. In the mid-1970s, Chong Ling first visited Beijing as a fashion model for a fashion show. Remembering the trip more than 40 years later, she says at that time the mainland was a very different place from Hong Kong. Everyone was in dark blue. This is already very shocking to me because I've never been to the mainland in that time. And I have relatives that was all in dark blue, dark grey, green, black. In the mid 1970s, the Chinese mainland was yet to launch its reform and opening up policy, which has been crucial to its dazzling economic and social progress since the end of that decade. When Chung Ling first visited Beijing, the living standards in the mainland generally lagged behind those of Hong Kong. In addition to the drab color of the clothes, she was surprised that the locals didn't treat her as a Chinese person. At that time, we were treated like a foreigner, even though I'm Chinese looking. My Mandarin wasn't good. We were a group that came in to do a show. So we sat with the organizers. We had different food in different areas of the restaurant. And all of the staff, the local people had a different table and ate different foods. It was a different time, completely. But Chung Ling has always been aware of her Chinese identity, though she lived in British-ruled Hong Kong and abroad for a long time. I've always felt I was Chinese because my mother's from Beijing. I'm also South American because my father's from South America. But where does my father come from before South America? It's still from China. He originated from China. His father, my grandfather, is from South America, Guyana. But where did he come from? China. 
So ancestors come from where? That's where you are. You can't just forego your history of your ancestors. Twelve years ago, Chong Lin decided to settle down in Beijing so as to better connect with her Chinese heritage. Now living in her mother's hometown, Chong Lin calls Beijing home, and is very satisfied with her life and businesses here. Compared with Hong Kong, she says she has more opportunities to interact with people in the Chinese capital, which is home to more than 21 million residents. People are very interesting, very real, very grounded, very down to earth, and people don't take things for granted. There's not one type of people here. There's a million different types of people here. Very interesting. Furthermore. Chong Ling says the mainland has undergone an impressive transformation over the decades since she first visited it. But now it's more commercial. I just arrived in Daqing from England. It's so cosmopolitan. It's shocking. It is so open to many more people coming in to do commerce, study, travel, do research. It's just very interesting. What she refers to is the state-of-art Beijing Daqing International Airport. The massive airport has four runways and hundreds of aircraft stands. It was built in less than five years and opened in September 2019. Long legs, long time, long time, long legs. Flying, dancing, and teaching. Chong Ling is indeed busy with her businesses. Meanwhile, she also devotes some of her time and money to charity. Giving support to young artists who come from humble backgrounds. My T I Foundation gives scholarships to performing artists that have no money. Of course, a lot of boys, because a lot of boys' parents won't let them dance. They want to have a proper career. Dancing is not a career, so I give them funds to build to give them a career. And after that, we do artist development, musician development, visual arts management courses. She says about a hundred dancers have benefited through her Tian Art Foundation over the past ten years, and this gives her a feeling of achievement. So I'm very in love with my life here because I am able to help. It's also I am of use, and I'm doing something constructive. Chong Ling has a daughter and two grandchildren who live in Hong Kong. Every month, she flies back to see her loved one. Basking in the warmth and sweetness of her family, just as she did during her childhood. You've been listening to Footprints. 